again. With just a day to go before Britain decides who will be its next Prime Minister, the parties are pushing hard to get every last vote. Vion's London Bureau Chief Mandy Clark takes a look at the main political players and the issues dominating the second election in the UK in two years. It's the last day of campaigning and the candidates are giving it their all, crisscrossing the country, trying to win over the undecided. When Prime Minister Theresa May called the snap election in April, there was little doubt she would win a solid majority. We are living through an important moment. Brexit was the focus, and the election choice hinged on who could deliver a better deal for Britain. But over the last three weeks, her lead has lagged. Some analysts suggest there might be a hung parliament, and that could lead to a political deadlock just when formal Brexit talks begin. Opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn has done better than expected in surveys. He seems to have the youth vote with his promise to end university tuition fees. He's also seen as anti-establishment, and that has appeal with voters who are sick of the status quo. But Corbyn is a vocal pacifist and is also seen as not tough enough on terror. The recent terror attacks have colored the national conversation now, and May's record as Home Secretary has come under scrutiny. She had drastically cut policing numbers while in that job. The latest opinion polls have cut the Conservative lead drastically. They still have Theresa May ahead of Jeremy Corbyn from anywhere from 12 to just one point ahead. But the polls have famously got it wrong in the past, failing to predict the election of President Trump and not seeing that Britain would choose to Brexit. It seems that this election could be anyone's. Mandy Clark, we on London. And Mandy Clark is joining us from London this evening. Also with us, Giles Kenningham, former director of communications of the Conservative Party, also in London. Good evening to both of you. Mandy, it's been a difficult time for the UK, what with the terror attacks, as you also mentioned in that report. Are the voters enthused about tomorrow's election? Um, you're not getting a sense of a lot of enthusiasm as um, the UK has gone to um, the ballot box quite recently over the past years. There was uh, the, the last elections, but also they went to the polls for Brexit. So there's a sense of um, there's been a lot of elections one after another. Uh, but I don't get the sense that people are scared to vote. Certainly these terror attacks, if anything, would have reaffirmed Britain's will go to the ballot box in defiance of any terror threat. Giles, what happened to the Tory campaign? How is it that uh, Theresa May's lead uh, eroded so dramatically between the day she announced the election and polling day? Well, look, I mean, we still don't actually know what the outcome will be, and the pollsters have been wrong before. Uh, they got it dramatically wrong in 2015. They got it dramatically wrong with Brexit last year. Uh, so, you know, the jury is still out. Hmm. Clearly, you've had uh, two horrendous terror attacks during this campaign, which have interrupted uh, the momentum and flow. And Theresa May started the campaign from an incredibly high base, which is always very difficult because expectations are very large. Jeremy Corbyn started this campaign with expectations very low, and he's outperformed expectations. It's fair to say uh, he's shown a deft, light touch uh, in the TV debates and has done better than expected. But as Mandy said there, and as you alluded to, it alluded to uh, earlier on, ultimately this election will come down to turnouts and who goes to the polls. Now you've got your third vote uh, in three years uh, and normally with that kind of, when you have so many votes, uh, so often it depresses turnout. So both sides will be very keen to mobilize turnout. For the Tories, it's the older demographic which is key to them getting over the line. Uh, and for Labour, as you said, it's all about getting the young vote out who traditionally don't vote. Right. Uh, Mandy Clark, Jeremy Corbyn was deemed unelectable by, by many within his own party. Where is all the support suddenly coming from? It is It is the, almost like a counterculture um, movement. There is um, a, a hip hop group that is supporting Corbyn and uh, certainly pushing the young to get registered and um, get voting. So you're seeing it from uh, kind of not traditional groups, but you're seeing it from the youth, um, counterculture groups. Um, and of course, there is trade unionists that is kind of one of Labour's biggest supporters. So um, 
it seems they had a fractious relationship with the, the head of the trade union and Jeremy Corbyn, but uh, the, the trade union is still supporting labor. So that would be the, the majority of their base. Giles, I agree with you that yes, the jury is still out and uh, we do not know which way things will go. But in hindsight, would you say that calling the snap election at a time when she did was uh, a major miscalculation on Theresa May's part? No, I still think ultimately it probably will be uh, and be seen as a tactical masterstroke, uh, especially if she ends up with more seats than when she started with. Uh, it gives her more room to maneuver uh, in relation to the Brexit negotiations. Uh, and what it means is that, you know, had she not called an election, she would have had to have struck a deal with Brussels in the next two years and then gone to the polls. There would have been a rush. Now she's got five years to get a deal, uh, to get a deal on her own terms. So I still think it was the right thing to do. Uh, clearly, though, I mean, the verdict will be cast tomorrow. Mandy, what happens uh, to the Brexit process if Labour wins or if there's a hung parliament? Is it reversible? Well, well, that Brexit is reversible within the two years. There is, um, there is nothing stopping um, pulling out of the Article 50. Uh, certainly, I, I cannot see the Conservatives or Labour making that decision. Both have committed to continuing with uh, Brexit. And this election, um, what has dominated the conversation hasn't been Brexit. We, the, you know, Early on, that's what we thought would be the main conversation. It has been the the National Health Service. It has been these terror attacks. So um, there is every possibility they can stop the Brexit process. But certainly that is not the sense you're getting that uh, either of the main political parties would do so. It isn't great if there's a hung parliament right before Brexit talks. That would certainly uh, deem to weaken um, whoever the, the Prime Minister is, uh, their position when it comes to the table at uh, the EU. Right. Uh, big day tomorrow. Yeah, no, Thank I, you. I agree. You want to make a point, Giles? No, so I agree with, I agree with, uh, with Mandy there. Actually, I don't think there's any appetite uh, from the British public to reverse uh, the Brexit vote, but clearly a hung parliament would fuel a climate of uncertainty and be bad for whoever uh, ends up in charge. Right. Big day tomorrow. Thanks very much, Mandy Clark Thank and you. Giles Kenningham. Thank you very much. May the best man or the woman win this election. Up next on this show, all about the SCO. Do stay tuned.